Most of the time, we are talking pretty regularly about how depressing it is to be Disney these days. Box office bombs left and right, problems within the culture war, but there is a bright spot for them right now, which is the movie Inside Out 2, which opened huge over the weekend, making $155 million here in the US, a combined total of $295 million overseas, you know, when you combine all of them together. And I think that the, one of the most interesting concepts behind this discussion is they are talking about what the demographic breakdown was of everyone who went and saw this. And Mary made the point to me off air that what it is, is it's capitalizing on the anxious nature of today's young women. Yeah, it's it's basically a cynical ploy at bringing mental health awareness mm -hmm. activism into the mainstream through pop culture. And I really don't like the whole mental health awareness mm. movement because it's all about finding out what's wrong with you mm. instead of trying to be a functioning adult. I will push back on this in general. Look, uh, from what I've seen from everyone who's seen it, says that they enjoyed it a lot. The movie has That's great fine. mass appeal. And when they talk about anxiety and emotions, the idea here is that they're universally applicable, meaning that everybody in some way, shape or form feels these things. And they would rather they talk about ideas that have a sort of universal nature to it rather than stuff that seems to be only made for a specific group. Like last week, we talked about how the the head of, the chief creative officer over at Pixar talked about how they had to get away from stories that were autobiographical to the director mm -hmm. and start talking about ideas that have more mass appeal. It is fair to point out that talking about emotions is something with a lot of mass appeal, especially for a movie that is appealing to women. Certainly the yeah. demographics, I think it was 58% of the movie going audience for this film were women. And we know that women like to to talk about their emotions. Yeah, yeah, they love psychoanalyzing. Call me sexist, what am I supposed to say? Talking the about truth. their feelings all the time, so this definitely appeals to them. But what was interesting is, uh, it seemed like this had a huge jump in the millennial female audience yeah. from last time. It mainly appealed to the two to 11 year old demographic the first time <laughs> around, back in 2015 when it came out. This sequel uh, was 21% 35 to 44 year olds. Yes. And uh, that's the biggest jump in demographics. So they the lost to the second. They lost space on two to eleven year olds by a percentage, yeah. and they lost space when it comes to what was it twenty five to thirty? No, they gained space in twenty five to thirty four and thirty five to forty four. Uh, right. Thoughts on that? <laughs> From going to toddlers to thirty five to forty. It's mostly it's it's neurotic white women yeah. who love talking about their anxiety. And I looked up, uh, you know, why is Inside Out two doing so well? Time listed three reasons. They said one is Hollywood isn't making enough family movies, so this fills that gap. Garfield did yeah. well. Secondly, animated sequels de generally perform better than live action sequels. I get that. That's really that was a really really interesting point because that's actually true. When you think about yeah, Despicable Me, it's true. Despicable However, Me Four is about to come out. This Minions is a, came a out. nine year gap from the yeah. first to the second, which is insane. But thirdly. Anxiety is having a moment. Do you want to explain what Anxiety they mean Anxiety is having a moment in pop culture. If you've read the news in the past decade or so, you're probably aware the kids are not all right. There's an anxiety epidemic among teens right now, in part because of the rise of social media. And while Inside Out 2 doesn't address the crushing pressures created by Instagram and TikTok, it does anthropomorphize the common experience of an anxiety attack. And that is Maya Hawke's character. They yep. made an entire character to represent anxiety inside Riley's mind. And I honestly think that this is not going to help any of the young people watching. No, not in any real meaningful way. You know, I never thought that I'd get to 34 and think that being bullied and neglected was the dignified route. <laughs> it's like this is, I just hear these people complain about anxiety and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah. That's what happens. But also, I don't it. think you should make that the normal, the normalized experience, right? Like, if we're talking about anxiety as a medical diagnosis, like an anxiety disorder, that is not normal, and mm -hmm. that is not something you should present as just part of growing up. What was it we were talking about when Ariana Grande was like, they should have therapists on set? I'm like, that's a sign you're doing things wrong if you need therapists sure. on set. Yeah. Right? That, yeah, that and I'm thinking about, like, Aging up this character Riley to her teen years, she's like 13 in this movie, I believe. She's going into middle school. And wouldn't you make a character for like her self esteem 
maybe mm. instead of anxiety. Mm. That seems to make more sense to me as a normal experience for teens. By the way, I know correlation doesn't lead to causation, except most of the time it does, but <laughs> we have more people in therapy than ever and more mental illness than ever. More children in therapy than ever. A anyone? Specifically as anyone? well. Anyone? Yeah. Not helping, maybe? And does it mean that there's an increase in mental health disorders? And we or? have less Xbox Live savagery than ever. Anyone? I know correlation doesn't lead to causation, but... I'm going to give, Disney, cooking I'm gonna give right Disney the benefit of the doubt on this because most of the people who are very heavily critical of Disney aren't seeing anything inherently wrong with this film. It's going to have a 100-day run in the theaters, which is about the best thing that they can do right now, is that with good word of mouth, the drops from week to week will be small. And, and the next competitor is Despicable Me yeah. 4. Um, but not just July. that. Uh, it was the second biggest domestic opening for an animated movie ever, right behind Incredibles 2 back in 2018 uh, which I think was like 182 million dollars domestically but if you adjust that for inflation it pushes it like over the 200 million dollar mark now this is going to make money eventually but it did cost 200 million dollars to make which means that if you add you know if you do the normal formula and you do times 1.5 that means that it's a 300 million dollar movie with marketing and this movie did have a lot of marketing behind it so it's all it's very reasonable to believe that that number is on the low side and mm -hmm. they likely put a lot more money into that than they already yeah. thought so if we're seeing a movie that costs three sit will low end and say 300 million dollars all in means it has to make six to seven hundred dollars before it even gets close to getting anywhere yeah. near breaking even that's a lot of money but at the pace it's going meaning that it only made about 20 million dollars or 10 million dollars less than what barbie made in its opening weekend that could push this to be something that ends in the 800 to 900 million dollar range assuming that the film does well week to week and doesn't just drop off a cliff. I understand your argument for why this has a mass appeal factor, mm -hmm. but I'm critical of this because I just generally don't like the idea of a franchise growing up with its audience. And that's a There's big part no of There's no reason this that you need to do that. Like think about all of these Disney reboots. They mm -hmm. they tried to reboot Lizzie McGuire and then trash really? that idea. Is but it's it's like $20 there. Oh, Francisco, Francisco Sanchez Jr. said, welcome back, Burn? I like Is that Burn. your name? I like Burn. Uh, it's good to see Burn the notice. two to one female ratio is back on PCC. <laughs> My thoughts on Inside Out 2... I have none. I found the first one to be dog poop. It's interesting because almost everybody that I've talked to thought it was like that I've talked to that saw the movie liked it. Now, these are people that from what I've the ones that I've talked to review movies for a living or at least re review movies like on like whether they're using critic lists or they like to to talk about movies and stuff like this the average audience score here the, the biggest benefit they have here that I don't see anyone talking about is the 54% of the audience was infrequent moviegoers hey I, I have a sincere okay. question based on like based on that Every time we're, we're here, we're discussing movies. We usually talk about the marketing budget and then like mm -hmm. compare it to the ultimate outcome. And it feels that they're like these studios are putting so much money, mm -hmm. so much money in marketing. But uh, but the correlation of money to viewers is still relatively low as it used to be. Is movies? Go I feel like movies is going the way of 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 the opera, where it's like an archaic. That's what uh, mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino was saying. Or what Quentin Tarantino was saying was he said movies used to be a blue collar industry for, for yeah. viewers, right? Whereas now Friday night now after it's the school, it was the coolest yeah. thing. Now it's becoming like you know the opera or something like that, where only people who actually have money can afford to go to it. Besides, so that's actually a really interesting comparison. And besides that, I'm all, I, every time I go to the movies with my wife, it's like two more people. Yeah. There's no one in the theaters. Yeah, ever. it is. I mean, like we. I mean, we we usually go on Thursdays, so we don't have the best example of like. We're going to the earliest. So screenings going on a possible. Thursday in the summer, you might get a good gauge of people going to the movies because people are kids are off school and stuff like that. But if you're going to a Thursday night movie, most of the people don't go till Friday. But like, do Friday night movies do they are they still full? I wonder. Mm -hmm. I, I have no I mean I always go on Thursdays Yeah we now. wouldn't know It's really funny Because I was like uh, I've Now I've been back home Twice this year And gone to the Mall of America Both times Since like the only time I'd been to the mall In like 15 years And the mall's still Pretty packed Because it's You well, know It's the Mall of America But, but still not close To the numbers That it was doing When I was younger but yeah. still a, a lot of people there and to the budgets that's actually important because tom cruise like the so a big 
conversation that's going on right now is Mission Impossible 7, Dead Reckoning, was one of the most expensive movies ever made because of COVID protocols. It cost a ton of movie of uh, money to make. Well, now they're saying that Mission Impossible 8, the budget is reaching an all-time high. Uh, and the last movie lost like $200 million in theaters. Whereas like, I imagine that a lot of this is just like, it costs a lot of money to insure Tom Cruise. <laughs> The Mission Impossible budget surpassed 300 million. That's insane. Making it the most expensive installment in the franchise. After losing money on the last one, wouldn't you think we should step back? Yeah. And cut the story down. Maybe not make another one. <laughs> I, got, look, I got into a, a really fun back and forth with somebody on Twitter about budgets in Hollywood. And I said, there should be a cap for the next 10 years. Well, well five years. No movies exceed $100 million. None. You make do with that amount of money, and I would bet that you know the a lot of times the best stuff is done out of necessity. That great stories would come out of the necessity to make them on a cheaper budget, meaning they had to focus on the story and not necessarily on the special effects. The previs and the special effects would be done better because they would require more forethought rather than just puking a bunch of CGI <clears throat> vomit all over the screen. Like I said, movies like The Creator cost eighty million dollars to make because the director and the visual effects artist were discerning and how they produced it and I bet you if you put that cap on films for a decade and told the studios you can't spend more than a hundred million dollars on movies that better stuff would come of it not worse but you know what I, what I found is that usually the indie films I also was along your line of thought but I feel like they're all just focus on reviving stuff mm -hmm. that was poorly done by a studio and then having like a cheap low rent version of it where the script is somewhat better mm -hmm. But it, it's so low budget that it's well, still... Well, $100 I don't million know. Dollars is still not a low budget. No, like, I, a lot not, of... $100 million dollars can go a long way. I, I mean, literally low budget movies. Like, not no nowhere close to a million. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, like, I want them to take the great script writers who work with Lil and give them the $100 million dollar movie so that they can make a $100 million dollar movie with the mind of somebody making something for much cheaper. They I mean, did that they, for the, Nia DaCosta. How did that go? Bad bad script, not a good script. I don't I don't want I don't care about the director. I want good script writers and I want people that mm -hmm. are actually producing movies like we got a $20 right there from Jen. Jen Hoove have two autistic daughters and they really enjoyed Inside Out 2. It's a good way for kids on the spectrum to identify some of their emotions. I was pleasantly surprised that they left the woke crap out. Yeah, most uh, A lot of people thought that this was the one where they're gonna make Riley a lesbian, <laughs> and thankfully that didn't happen. Yep. So, but just look, think about it. They're obviously going to make a profit of some kind off of the sequel. Mm -hmm. They're gonna approve the third one, and that's gonna be her in high school, right? Yeah. I don't have high hopes for the way they're going to do that. It's gonna be bad. Well, I mean, the, and if they want people to take a, a rosier approach to it, then they have to deliver more actually good movies in a row. Like you need to have more success stories in a row before pe before things turn around. This may turn around the box office for Disney this year, but even um, Planet of the Apes, which made like I think like 360 or something million dollars at the box office, well that doesn't really matter because it cost 160 million dollars to make. So once you add in marketing and then you split the theater take with it that one's not breaking even either deadpool versus wolverine will probably be their best chance at a truly profitable movie next to inside out 2. Mm -hmm. so we'll wait and see where it goes but it is going to be interesting to see what lessons they take from this and i think the biggest number there that nobody was talking about was the infrequent moviegoer what was it that drew people who don't normally go to the movies to go see your film. I'm always la I always laugh at the idea when people say they can predict how these films are going to do because I I don't know. Even this did way better than expectations, but it's a crapshoot as to why things do well or don't do well these days. I do think that a lot of people, especially those of us who criticize companies like Disney, don't realize that they are still in a bubble of their own making in a little bit and that the average moviegoer who doesn't, you know, obsessively pay attention to what Bob Iger is saying about working for Disney or about what Disney is making, don't look at things the same way.
and mm-hmm. they're looking at it in a much more normy perspective and capturing a normy audience is one of the hardest things to do these days because there's just infinitely other things that they can be doing there's social media movies are expensive there's a lot of reasons why people don't go to the theaters and not every single one of them has to do with the culture war Pixar has another movie coming out, I think, later this year. But it's for theaters, not for Disney Plus, as Luca and Turning Red were. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see how that one is going to turn out. Also, uh, I think if this movie does well for the whole hundred day run, that's a good indicator for them to not just, you know, run it for thirty days or two weeks and then mm-hmm. dump it on streaming. Right. So. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.